Now we know, uh, Simon, earlier on this morning, Norwich City put out their statement. They're delighted to confirm the appointment of Dean Smith uh, as their new head coach. Uh, he's put pen to paper, Danny. It's a two and a half year deal and he'll be joined in Norfolk by assistant head coach Craig Shakespeare. Smith says it's been a whirlwind seven days. I'm really pleased to be back and um, working uh, for Norwich City in the, the Premier League. Where do you stand with it, Danny? A good appointment? You back it? Yeah, please for him. A shrewd appointment. I think we all concurred that he was a little bit unfortunate to lose his job. Mm. Um, he's got good experience, Championship and Premier League. And the one thing at Norwich you can say is that generally they give the managers a good opportunity to, to succeed. Um, so I don't think the pressure is is on him to keep them up. He's obviously going to try and improve them. But he's been in a relegation fight. He'll be very aware of the Norwich squad and the players. So I'm really pleased for him. It's it's a really, really good appointment. I mean, is it to be admired, Simon, that Smith himself wants to throw himself straight back into it? To, and it's a oh, yeah, challenge. Of course. I mean, last week I made the observation, which has created a great deal of glee on social media, that I found it <laughs> difficult to see that he'd get back into the Premier League because I didn't see the index to Norwich. Now, I could say that temporarily he's back in the Premier League, but the reality is he'll be back in the Championship pretty soon. I'll make a facetious comment that way. Never say never. But never say never. But I was, I mean, reading between the lines, and this is between the lines, Frank Lampard seems to have walked away from that job seems to have gone up there, had an interview, not been entirely enamoured with what he's heard or felt that it was not the right way to rebuild his career. Dean Smith is a steady pair of hands. Clearly he's done a decent job at Warsaw. Clearly he's done a decent job at Brentford. And to be fair, he did a decent job at Aston Villa that probably was a little bit precipitous in taking him out the way they did. But they've made their bed and they're going to go off with Stephen Gerrard and see where that takes them. Going into Norwich, precisely for the reasons that you just laid out, is, and Danny's alluded to, is that they're a sensible football club that doesn't just knee-jerk. Yeah. Dean Smith will do a decent job. Is he going to set them alight? No, but do Norwich, do, need, do they want to be set alight? They've made this statement themselves that they're in the best 26 clubs in the country. So that kind of tells you where they are. Economically, they're sensible. And you read, I was reading some interesting articles over the weekend by people like Rob Little talking about whoever you put in a football club, to some extent the manager's less important than the owner because the owner's checkbook determines how successful you're going to be. Yeah. And they were applying that to Gerrard at, New, at Villa and Eddie Howe at Newcastle and so on and so forth. Mm. And in this instance, I think, look, Nor Newcastle and Norwich have the same amount of points. But there's a, to me, there's a vast difference between the two football clubs. One has an inordinate amount of money available to it and is about to unleash it in January. Another has been up and down in the Premier League and seems to accept that as its fate mm. and has been poor Take you know, in, in most of the games with the exception of two nil-nil draws and a, and, a, and a win against a declining Brentford over the r most recent weeks. It'll be interesting to see how Dean solidifies or makes them more solid because they are... Norwich, I'm sorry, they're quite a poor size. Mm. And I don't see them staying in the Premier League. And I think that he has been brought in with one mind to make it respectable this season and to get some morale back in the camp. Well, at least they've won a game, though, because Newcastle haven't. Well, they have won a game, yeah, but Newcastle have drawn five games. And arguably, you can look at some of those games and say they're unlucky against Brighton. They've Out of the 11 games they've played, they've lost six of them and drawn five. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Norwich have lost seven or eight games. Sure. So with that in mind... The only I'll... thing I would say is the fixture list for Norwich looks OK coming up for him. Just looking at it now, <laughs> Danny, you got that in front of you. So Southampton, Wolves, Newcastle, Tottenham, Manchester United, Villa. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not, it could have been a lot worse. The first three especially. You know, if he can get one or two positive results out of that game, it gives him a bit of momentum. You never know. I mean, you've got to go in there with some belief. But I think you're right, Simon. I think there's a... I think the, well, the remit is about improving well, and making them a bit Wolves more competitive. Side, so Wolves will give him a run for their money. Southampton have just beaten Aston Villa where he just mm. came from and put him out of a job. So he might want to get, you know, instantaneous uh, retribution. Newcastle and Norwich is an absolute fundamentally huge game for both managers for different reasons. Eddie Howe needs to get off the ground yeah. and get some wins behind him and these are the games he's got to do it in. But well, the pressure, right, the pressure writing off Norwich but not writing off Newcastle? I'm not right. I mean, I think they'll both go. Um, but I'm not writing off Newcastle because they have the ability. They have the ability to be able to control their direction of travel through an unprecedented amount of money being available mm. to them in January. How that changes them is a different matter. But I still have reservations that they'll stay up. So Where, where's I. Frank Lampard's next role, Danny? Don't know. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if he, he wasn't the running for Norwich and then took himself out the running for Norwich, there are reports that he's not in the running for Rangers. There are three there, and he's not one of the three. Time will tell on that one. Where does he see himself, do you think? Where do you see him? Well, I think he sees himself as a Premier League manager and he, he, he you know, he, he's got the self-belief. That's fine. That's, that's up to him. I, I think in football, things evolve quickly at various clubs. There's there's always jobs coming up. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting there too concerned that there's never going to be an opportunity. There will be. It's just a case of when. And he obviously didn't feel the Norwich thing was right for him or vice versa. I don't know exactly what's happened there. It'll come out in the wash. But Frank's a talented, young, intelligent manager. So but he's he, been he, out of work since January. He has. But he'll get an opportunity somewhere. Yeah. Tra tragedy for Frank is he's got no backdrop for suggesting he's a Premier League manager. 
he's got no credentials besides he's Frank Lampard. Well, that's not true. Well, it kind of is because because the Chelsea side that he inherited with a group of young players did okay, and then when it came on top in a Premier League, which is when you spend money. Out the door he went. Yeah, but he still in that season he still showed a lot a, a lot of maturity for a young manager in getting so, in getting him into a top four without any transfer window, and never managing at that level before was a pretty da- a good achievement. And he and he got to a cup final. Granted, you know it's but, not bad. But, I mean, okay, if you think those are credentials, we can all have we, we can all be a one season wonder. We can pick managers out of the ether and say, well, he did well in one season, so that makes him a Premier League manager. Going no, forward. I'm just going again. What you just said, he's got no credentials to be a Premier League. That that is something on the CV rather. I mean, if you look at Steve, he's gone to Villa. He's never managed in the Premier League. No, so and it, I don't think he's got the credentials either. I think neither well, one true. of the, neither one of these guys would walk through the door if they were Joe Schmo from nowhere and not Frank Lampard and not Steven Gerrard. They would never ever get these opportunities because they don't merit them. Wow, they honestly, don't merit, they don't. Well, they don't no, that, no, that makes sense. Only there because of their name. Well, a significant part of the sil- of the gold dust that goes the gravitas with it, that they yeah, bring, the gravitas yeah. that they bring to the table, not necessarily in managerial terms, but in reputational terms, in football recognition, in football parlance. Stephen Gerrard, you know who he is. Frank Lampard, you know who he is. Uh, they both talk very well. Yeah. They both got good backgrounds. They both seem to be very sensible. Hmm. But neither one of them has been at the top table for winning anything significant. I know the SPFL is something significant in Scotland, but in real terms, it's not going to compare to the job in hand at Aston Villa. Of course not. I'm just saying that I think Frank had enough positives in that spell at Chelsea for someone to then say, OK, we'll give you another yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Uh, no word out of Rangers this morning. We're trying to find if they're getting closer to an announcement there. We will see Giovanni Van Bronckhorst seems to be uh, the favourite to land the job that Steven Gerrard had. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.